Personal story segment tonight, you know the White House had to be watching the Glenn Beck rally very closely because the entire populist movement that's going on isn't good news for the president. I think it's safe to say about 95% of those who attended the rally in Washington do not like Mr. Obama's policies. The president was asked about Beck on NBC. It's not surprising that somebody like a, a Mr. Beck is able to stir up a, a certain portion of the country. That's been true throughout our history. What I'm focused on is making sure that the decisions we're making now are going to be not good for the nightly news, not good even necessarily uh, for the next election, but are good for the next generation. And I'm very confident that those decisions are the ones that we've made. Uh, joining us now from Washington, Fox News analyst Mary Catherine Hamm and Juan Williams. All right, Juan, I mean, do you agree with me that this rally isn't going to help President Obama and his administration? Well, you're exactly right. How could it help President Obama? I think most of the people out there, in fact, are critics of President Obama, if not political opponents, which is why when you hear Glenn Beck say this was not a political rally, I think people have to just shake their heads. Obviously, this was a highly politicized event uh, with lots of support coming from the Tea Party and a major political figure uh, with Tea Party support, Sarah Palin, as a featured speaker. So I thought, you know, Bill, one of the things I've learned from my relationship with you is there's power to emotion. And Beck was able to capture the emotion of the moment for lots of people in that audience. And you said rightly at the, early in this, earlier in the show, you asked, Glenn, are you, are you advocating a theocracy in America? Do you want simply that everybody, uh, you know, abide by one faith or one religion? How can it be that, you know, you have a situation where we're all concerned about this mosque at Ground Zero, but you're going over there on Martin Luther King's day, the day of the I Have a Dream speech, and not seeing it is potentially offensive to some people who hold King so dear to their See, heart. I, but I don't think Glenn Beck has an obligation to some people who may be offended by a positive message to change anything. I would have done exactly what he did. But let me, let me challenge you on one thing, Juan, because I think this is very sure. interesting. Um, Beck was quite clear on his radio and television broadcasts that he didn't want any political signs. He didn't want any divisiveness. He didn't want any sloganeering. He told Sarah Palin that we don't want any political speech making. I don't know how clearer the man could be to what the presentation was going to be about. I mean, you heard Al Sharpton say that, oh, yeah, well, he said that he was going to do X, Y, and Z. I'm telling you, I know Beck better than anybody. I never heard him say anything political or racial about this whole deal. All he wants is to get America's mindset back into the Judeo-Christian flow. Now, you may disagree with that, Juan, but no, that's I what agree. the man but, but wants. Bill, and he mobilizes that, uh, all these people out there, he, and they attack him viciously father, for that. But, Bill, is he now Father Beck? I mean, He I, can I've be Father whoever he wants to be. <laughs> no, Beck, is a, he has freedom Look, of speech. If he wants is, the, the country to return to Judeo-Christian values, Bill, he can let me say that. You. Let Look, me challenge you for a second. Do you honestly believe this is anything more than a dodge for a political movement that he's wrapping himself? Yes, I don't believe that one. I got to tell you, I know Beck. About the terrorists, Beck is not a charlatan. He's wrapping himself Listen. in God's cloak and saying, I, he this can is wrap all about God and If he loves soldiers. God and believes that's right for the nation, he can do what he wants. But I will tell sure. the audience this, Beck is not a charlatan. If he says it is in politics, it is in politics. Go, Mary Catherine. Look. I, I had some questions originally about the wisdom of the August 28th date, and it just seemed like sort of maybe picking a fight you don't need to fight. But I think what actually came of this is that you had this spectacularly benign event that was sort of a multi-faith worship service with a lot of patriotism thrown in. And it actually sort of ended up made, making critics look a little silly uh, for getting so up in arms about it. More and than I think you see Al Sharpton, right, More and you see Al Sharpton tonight essentially saying, yeah, everything was A-OK, -okay. Beck didn't do anything wrong, nobody picked a fight with my people, everything was OK. Our marchers and their marchers were fine together. And I think that actually ended up being the story. And so now uh, the, the left is having some trouble characterizing well, the event. Well, they're backpedaling like crazy. I mean, right. uh, uh, what do you think, Juan, when you hear Howard Dean, the Talking Points memo, saying that he's a fear monger and a racist, he's not right in the head, oh, this about Glenn Beck. I mean, this is the re former governor of Vermont Dean and a, a presidential candidate and he's saying these things about a guy who's urging Americans to get back to God. I mean, to me, it's 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 pretty frightening. Well, you know what? I disagree with Howard Dean and I, I don't think Howard Dean has much listened to much of Glenn Beck because I think lots of Beck's critics jump way before they know exactly what they're dealing with and what Glenn actually says. But right. in all candor, Glenn did call President Obama. Yeah, a but racist he apologized. Bill. We went yeah. through hey, it. Bill, Bill. 
I've never, I, you don't have to, I don't have to, Mary Catherine, we don't say things like the, the, the racist that is the biggest threat to America is President Obama. That's the craziest thing I ever heard. All right, well, you That's apologize for it. I'm not, listen, I challenged Beck when he said it. I said it was wrong. Beck says okay. it's wrong now. We all make mistakes, especially when you're doing four hours of commentary a day, which the man does. Well, all right, Mary okay. Catherine, I'm going to well, give you the last word on it. Uh, how bad is this for the Obama administration? How bad is it for the president to see this kind of a turnout at Beck's event? Well, I think obviously not very many people could have turned out this many folks on August tw on a Saturday in, in August. And I think the left sort of uh, comparing it to Obama's uh, inauguration numbers and saying, well, it was pretty small compared to that is telling about uh, how big an event this actually ended up being. Uh, I think what's most important, and this is the reason they don't have to have a political discussion at the rally, is that the folks getting together and making connections and going back home and becoming activists in their own community, that's what's dangerous to Obama and probably to Democrats. All right. That's well, what I'm goes forward. That's what lives always. on. Thanks. Stay with us. I'm Bill O'Reilly. In a Weekdays with Bernie segment tonight, we asked the Fox News media analyst, take a look at how the Beck rally was covered by the major press outlets. One thing that struck me was that CNN bannered the rally a conservative situation. Now, when was the last time you ever saw CNN label a story liberal? I don't think it's ever happened. The New York Times buried the Beck coverage on page 15, but the Washington Post did have it on page 1. Joining us now from North Carolina, the purveyor of BernardGoldberg.com, Mr. Goldberg. So I'm going to let you just roam here. Uh, do you think the rally was covered fairly in general? Uh, there are a couple of things that bothered me. And before I tell you what they were, let me very, very, very briefly say that I think Glenn Beck brings some of this on himself with some of the things he has said in the past, apologies or no apologies. I think he brings some of this on himself. Okay, one thing that bothered me is what you just mentioned. CNN describes this as a conservative rally. It was. They are factually correct. But you're right. They don't label environmentalist rallies as liberal rallies or anti-war rallies as liberal rallies or feminist rallies as liberal rallies. And, and that's a very important point about labeling. It's I've called it Exhibit A to prove media bias. But there's more to it, Bernie. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's more to it. This was a non-political rally. They put a political term on it. See, yeah, you're right, a, right. Most of the people there are traditional slash conservative Americans. But it right. wasn't billed for that political purpose. It right. was billed but, for a spiritual Revival, almost like an Elmer Gantry type. Remember him? Yeah. You know, yeah, uh, very. Yeah, yeah. So okay. CNN wasn't accurate. They they deceived their audience by putting it up as a conservative is a political term. Go. They were accurate in that there were it was overwhelmingly populated by conservatives. They were accurate in that sense. But I'm not defending that. What I'm saying is. When you give labels to conservatives, but not to liberal rallies, what you're doing is you're putting a warning label on your news story. And it's similar to the warning label on a pack of cigarettes that says smoking may cause cancer. This warning label says, look out, there are a bunch of conservatives there. You have to pay attention. And the reason liberal journalists do that is because they see these conservative views, whether they were at this rally or not, as alien, as out of the mainstream. But liberal rallies, you're right, they don't label those. The reason they don't is because they see them as mainstream. They see them as middle of the road. Did you Everything see... to the right of center is right wing as, as far as the liberal media is concerned. Everything to the left of center is middle of the road as far as they're concerned. Did you see any condescension on the part of the Washington Post, New York Times, NBC or CBS News the night the Beck rally was uh, happened because ABC was preempted by baseball, Little League Baseball yeah. or something. All right. Did you see any I... condescension, any derision in the hard news coverage? And nothing that jumped out at me, but I did see in the New York Times, you're right, they put it on page 15. 15. They said there were tens of thousands of people when there were hundreds of NB thousands. NBC News, which is no right wing sympathizer organization, said there were 300,000. And they did one other thing. 
they said it was populated overwhelmingly by white people. Again, they are technically, journalistically, factually correct. But anti-war rallies and feminist rallies and environmental rallies White are people. overwhelmingly populated by... So why do they do that? Right. Because there's something about these people that they find that there's something suspicious about them, something that they don't feel comfortable about. So they say... Oh, by the way, they were overwhelmingly white, They're white as, people. As, as if that's a bad white thing. White conservative people. Yeah, white, white conservative, conservative people who have jobs. We hate them. Yeah, we right. Them. All right. <laughs> you, have a, you have a column, new column on immediate coverage of the Moss controversy, which never seems to end. What's the main yeah. point? You go to BernardGoldberg.com and read it. What's the main point? I think this is a real interesting point. In 1994, Peter Jennings, uh, right after... Uh, the Republicans took over both houses of Congress for the first time since 1950. Peter Jennings of ABC went on the radio, delivered a commentary, calling the voters, saying the voters threw a temper tantrum, his words, threw a temper tantrum, said they were behaving like two-year-olds. Well, obviously, the voters really weren't throwing a temper tantrum. Peter Jennings, may he rest in peace, is the one who was throwing a temper tantrum. What did the voters do? They only voted for Republicans over Democrats. Now, Bill, we're seeing it all over again. But this time, this time it's happening before the election because liberal journalists see the tsunami that's coming and they don't like it. So they're calling, and, I, and on the website I give chapter and verse. You're a bigot, you're a bigot, yeah. you're uninformed, you're stupid, you're un-American if you uh, oppose the mosque or if you oppose... If you oppose immigration, you're, you're against yeah, it's Latinos. The same old, or, it's the same old thing. No, I think that's they interesting become, that they're they angry. They become unhinged. Right, they angry. become unhinged, and they're doing it before the election this time, as opposed to 94 when they did it after the All election. Right. Bernie Goldberg, everybody, check out his website. We would be remiss this evening if we did not have some of the folks who attended Beck's rally weigh in on it. We got to ask the Heavenly Father for a change of our heart. I believe that our country should be putting God first once more. Hopefully, uh, this will be a call to restore the historical values in our nation. We got to stop spending. We got to get some morals, ethics back. We must rebuild our minds and rebuild our spirits. Is America not an honorable place right now? Sure, certainly it is in many aspects, but in many aspects it's not. I believe in uh, our Constitution and this administration doesn't. I, I cannot disagree with our president more. I believe he's leading this country in the wrong direction. Again, Czech believes everyone who attended that rally should be very proud of themselves. 